Yes, we're, we're not eating later. Amen. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would be with us, that you would be with. We need you, God. We need you. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we ask that you would be with us all and guide us. Help us, Lord, to do your will your way. We ask that you would be with the uh, Brother Asado as he brings the word to us today, that we would hear it, understand it, and apply it to our lives, God. We ask that you would be with us as we worship you, Lord, and that as we give for your kingdom, God, that you would multiply it. We thank you, God, in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I know some of you don't know what All Nation Sunday is. Well, it is an annual Sunday designated by the United Pentecostal Church International. It's to keep, it's to help the entire church, not just this church, but all over the world. It's to help us focus on reaching different culture, different cultures, different languages, and it's to help churches double their attendance and to more importantly make connections in their communities. See, the motto of the UPC is the whole gospel to the whole world. And our desire, their desire, is to be a church for all people in every community. Amen? Yes. Amen. So by, in Revelation 7, 9, it describes heaven as a place of all nations, tribes, peoples, and languages. And although we embrace diversity in our communities every day in All Nations Sun on All Nations Sunday, we intentionally focus on different nationalities. So I know many of us are different nationalities, mixed, but which nationality is prevalent in your life? How many nationalities do we have? What do you? Italian, okay. And, and Brother Parker? I'm English. English, Brother Harry? Irish and Indian. Irish and Indian. No, same as him. Oh, same as him, that's right. <laughs> Fred? German and Canadian. German and Canadian, I do believe that. <laughs> Robert? Span Hispanic? Puerto Rico? No. Mexico. Mexico? Okay. And Tanya? French, Irish, and Indian. Brother Will. I'm French, Irish, Scottish, Native American, and African Okay. And Tiffany. I am French, Canadian, and Scottish. All right. Yeah. Irish. Mm -hmm. right. Just Irish. And I guess I'm not good then. You're a You're a mutt too. <laughs> <laughs> like the rest of us. Brother, brother Jeff. Italian, English, Scottish, and German. Okay, Sister Kerr. Indian, Irish, Scottish, and Welsh. All right, Alberta. Ooh. Alberta. Uh, I got French, Indian, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is Tiguana. Yes. Tiguana. Tiguana. She's visiting because she works with Brother Asado, or works for, I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm yeah. wrong, but she she works at the school with Brother Asado, and so we welcome. Thank you. And what nationality? <laughs> I'm African American and Native American. Okay, nice. And Lasatia, do you know? No, you're American, right? You're born in America. Irish and French. I believe that too, <laughs> but you are American. And um, ocean? Spanish and Greek. Spanish and Greek. All right, I've got Greek in me. Brother Sato. German and Mexican. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what a mix. Bishop. German, English, Indian, American, Indian, and American. Wow. Okay. Any of you kids know? Well, I know you know Dom. Go ahead. Dominic first. Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Levi. Okay, uh -huh. I am French and I am a 
also yeah, I'm a college kid, and I am Hispanic, and I am Indian. Okay, all right, Brother Kevin. Do you know what nationality you are? Yeah, same as Levi's. <laughs> Fiona. <laughs> Well, I don't want to miss anybody. Okay. And Savannah, do you know? I know what Fiona is. She's from his Mexican on the other side. She's from the mother's side. Okay. All right. And Brother Christopher, what nationalities? Oh, boy. You're, now, just give us the main ones. Oh, the main ones would be French, Irish, and Scottish and English. Okay. And Sister Melly, same? Or mostly? Okay. Okay, Brother Timothy. Maybe Scottish, Irish, some French. Okay. All right. French and English. Okay. Irish, Scottish, German, Welsh. No. Christian, because you're together. Amen. All right. Well, I'm, I'm half Italian and mostly Scottish and French Canadian. So we just went through a whole bunch of nationalities just in this little church here. Amen. And so think about how many nationalities there are out there. There are 210 nations and 39 territories. And the United Pentecostal Church, is it, um, it started in, from uh, 1945, there was 521 churches in the UPCI, and it has grown to over more than 42,000 churches, including preaching points. There are over 41,000 credentialed ministers, and there are 5.3 million constituents worldwide. So they currently have a presence in 199 of the 210 nations and the 39 territories. That's right. Amen. And so <laughs> praise the Lord. That's what All Nation Sunday is about. It's to embrace all of the nationalities that we all have and are in, in our community also. And so just remember, whoever you meet on the street, just because they look one way doesn't mean anything. Amen? All right, let's stand and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Father. We praise you. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know about you, but I can't stop praising his name. And I was getting ready for some rain coming in through here. I was I was felt the rain drop a few times when we were saying about the rain. And I was feeling it. Oh, doesn't it feel good to be in the house of God? Aren't we blessed people today? Amen. Come on. I got good news and bad news. What do you want to hear first? Good news is Brother Sales preaching today. What more bad news is? Okay. Because he is. And man, I'll tell you what, this atmosphere in here is electric. It's powerful. in their life. Amen. And you're never going to be the same. You are never going to be the same after you leave this place. Because God has got you dialed up here in the last day and he knows your phone number. Yeah. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're going to do, we're going to do a couple of things right now. Number one, we're going to uh, take up um, see I didn't write it down. We're going to do that. Multicultural yeah, we're going to take up an offering for multicultural ministries. In the book of Revelations, boy, you, you, meant, you mentioned offering, it's real quiet. <laughs> wow. Oh, Holy Ghost, gone. Uh, amen, I'm just teasing. But anyways, uh, Revelation 7, 9, I'm going to read this real quick. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations, all nations, Amen. and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and, and palms in their hands. Amen. This is this is not a one size fits all type of situation we're in here. This is multiculturalism. This is all nations, everyone. God loves everybody, every culture, every person, every nation. Everyone. Remember that. It's hard sometimes. It's hard because we want justice. But God loves and he is love. Amen. So I'm going to pray and take up this offer. The first Lord, we pray God for this offering. We pray that you would bless it, Father. For all the nations that are out there, God, I pray, I pray you over this offering, I bless it in the name of Jesus Christ. Come as you feel led by the Holy Ghost to give to multiculturalism in Jesus' name. And also we want to take up our tithes and our offerings for those that are, you know, if you're here, this is your home church. This is what we do. We pay our tithes, we give an offering because we want to be blessed. We want God to open up the storehouse and, and, and pour out that blessing upon his children. Amen? Amen. We don't want it stopped up by not giving. We want to give because God gives. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Lord, we're so thankful, Father. Bless the gift and the giver here this, after, uh, this morning, Lord. As we come and give our offer, let us know that we're blessed because of it, Father. As we pay our tithes, we're blessed because of our obedience to the word of God. Thank you, Father. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I have the good fortune here to invite our speaker up today. And this is the first time I've ever heard him preach, so I'm, I know I'm going to be blessed. <laughs> and uh, we want to invite Brother Asado to come up and preach. Uh, take your liberty, brother. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Peace. 
honor and pleasure to be here, amen, to preach the word of God, to be here with my wonderful mother-in-law, who I love so much. She had spent many, many years building this church, amen, and now she's getting a little rest, amen. I know she hasn't stopped praying and stopped seeking the face of God for this church, but she put many, many years of love, sweat, heart, and tears in this place. Amen. And I can just imagine all those that have come through these doors, amen, because of her ministry. And I give her the honor, amen, today. Amen. Now, if you've never heard me preach, when I preach, preach, I don't stay in this mode for very long. Amen. I may be down there with you while I preach. And I know today is All Nations Day. Right there. So if you go in the back, you're not on. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to tie a rope to me then. <laughs> Amen. It's good to have Tiguana here. She's from visiting from Illinois. She's been doing some training in our schools. And then we just want to give her friends for her, past, her husband pastors a church there in Illinois. Amen. So it's good to have you and all those that I have not met. Amen. But I know today is All Nations Day. Um, I thought about preaching, you know, something about, but God has put something on my heart, and I'm the type, type of preacher that when God puts it in my heart, I preach it. Amen. All right. Amen. And I'm only the messenger of God. That's right. Amen. So if I get excited and I start walking, I'll make sure you pull me back, Brother James. So <laughs> I can come back into view. There is such a wonderful presence of God in this place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, when I preach, if God tells me to preach 15 minutes, I'll preach 15 minutes. He tells me to preach 45 minutes to an hour, I'll preach an hour. Um, last week I had such a wonderful message that God gave me, but I ended up preaching on four scripture, no notes, and just went rogue, amen. So I know today that God is surely in this place. There's a wonderful presence of God, and if you want something from the Lord, He is here. Amen. Amen. And the message I'm going to preach, amen, it is... For everyone. So, further ado, let's stand. Amen. And honor the Word of God. And let's turn to the First Samuel chapter 30. I went in the back when I got here. That's why I wasn't out here um, uh, shaking hands and stuff. And I was in there praying. Just I had my hands on the desk and I was just praying and going back and forth. And just in the Holy Ghost praying for God to touch, touch lives today. Yes. Do you want to be changed today? Yes. Do you want yes. your situation to be changed today? Yes. Do you want your church to change today? Yes. If you don't want to be changed, just stay where you're at. Because God wants to change. He wants to send His Holy Ghost fire in this place. Yes. And in God's fire, it consumes and destroys, but it builds back up. And He wants to consume all that which is not of him in our lives, and then he wants to take his Holy Ghost fire and breathe life and build it back up to what he wants it yeah. to be. Yeah. So turn me to 1 Samuel chapter 30, beginning in verse 1. It says, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south. And Ziklag had smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives. That there, that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoham the Jezreelite, and Abigail the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. I want to preach today on this topic. When hope is born. When hope is born. Let's pray and just let's ask the Lord for his power to come down to this place. Lord Jesus, we thank you today, God, for your wonderful presence that is already in this place, God. Lord, you see and you know every heart and every soul and every individual in this place. 
You know where we stand if we're on the mountaintop or in the valley, if we're going through a trial. If, if, Lord God, if our hearts are, are straight away from you, God, you know all things, Lord God. I just pray that your word will go forth for it is already anointed, God. I pray that you would anoint these lips of clay, God, that you will take a hold of us, God, and shake us today, God, in the power of your spirit, God, and change our lives, change our minds, change our attitudes, God. God, that you would just speak to us today, God, and encourage us and strengthen us, God. We are, we are living in the last days where men's hearts are failing them, God. But our hearts, God, need to be in tune to you, God. I just pray that you would move, God, and bless and encourage. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. dance, shout. I don't mind that at all. And I'm going to have a hard time staying in, in my little box here. <laughs> Amen. God is so good. So, we're living in a time, as I prayed, where it says that men's hearts are going to fail them. And we look around our, our world and it, it seems like, Lord, where is the hope? And we look at what's happening in Israel and all of that and we say, Lord, where is the hope? We look at some of our backslidden children and we say, Lord, where is the hope? Well, I want to tell you today that the hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our strength is in Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to walk in his spirit. We need to talk in his spirit. We need to pray and get a hold of God today because there is no hope out there but Jesus. And Jesus should be everything in our lives today. Amen. Amen. So we read here how David and his men come back and they find that the Amalekites have come and they, they've taken everything. And you think about probably because Saul did not obey what God told him to do about destroying all the Amalekites. And, and I want to tell you something right now. We need to kill the enemy completely in our lives. Well, guess what? They're going to come back. I know of some people that have kept things in the closet just in case. They backslide. Just in case they decide to quit church. Amen. But God wants us to destroy everything in our lives that's going to hinder our walk with Him today. Anything within the church that's going to hinder revival in the house of God and in the church today. We can't keep things in place. Because the enemy's not going to stop fighting. I've learned that. Amen. I mean, I've got some big decisions I've got to make for my ministry and for my family. Amen. And and uh, they're big. But I know that God has got everything into his hands because my hope is in him. Amen. Amen. It's not in this, this things of this world. Right. But we, we read in verse 3, it says, So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Everything that they had, they loved, that they cherished, it was taken into captivity by the enemy. You see, the enemy can take your blessings. He can take your strength. He can take your faith. He can take your prayer, take your worship, etc. He can take it into captivity. Now, I'm going to get further down in this, but he can take all those things and put it into captivity. Where's my prayer? The enemy has taken captive of it. Where's my worship? The enemy has taken captive of it. But where, where, where's my giving? The enemy has taken captive of it. Where's my excitement about living for God? I'm having a hard time not going down. Where, where, where's my excitement about serving God? The enemy has taken into captivity. Because we allow him right. to do it. Where's my blessings of the Lord? Yes. The enemy is taking it into captivity. Do you know how many miracles God has in this place today for us? But I wonder how many 
baskets of fish and those are going to be taken up because we got just a full, a full. See, you can never get too full of the things of God. Amen. Amen. But, but the things of God that God has given us can be taken into captivity. John 10, 10 says the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill. And not just to steal and kill, but to destroy. See, the enemy wants to come in and steal from you. And he wants to kill your walk with God. And then on top of all that, he wants to ultimately destroy you. And if he can get a hold of you, destroy your family. And then if he can destroy the families of the church, he can destroy the church. But I want to tell you something today that greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Amen. And I'm going to fight to the bitter end for my church, for my family, for my children, for this world that is out there. But Jesus says, I am calm that they might have life. And not only life, and that they might have it more. Abundantly. Yeah. See, Jesus is everything more. Yeah. Not just I'm going to do it more. Or I'm just going to do it so so. He goes, I'm going to do it more abundantly. More abundantly. Think about that. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we can hope. Or think according to the power which worketh in us. How much faith do we have today? How much Holy Ghost do we have today? How much strength do we have today? How much anointing do we have today? According to the power that worketh in us. More God, I want to give you life. I want to give you blessings. I want to give you hope and strength and peace and joy. I want you. God wants revival in this church and in churches around the state of Maine more than we do. God wants to give you blessings more than we want the blessings. God wants to answer our prayer more than we want Him to answer the prayer. God wants to heal your body, your mind, your emotions more than we want to be healed. And that they might have it more abundantly. Verse 4 in 1 Samuel 30 says, Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. At this moment, were they just licking their wounds or were they seeking after God? Too many times when the enemy comes against us or we go through a trial or something happens, we sit there and we lick our wounds like a puppy. Poor me, oh my. Oh me, oh my. I've been there, I've done that. God, why this? God, why that? Why did this happen? Why did that take place? Lick in my wounds. And that's what they were doing. They were weeping and they were crying. But they weren't seeking after the face of God. And we need to get out of that mentality. Yes, we are human beings and we are going to go through some things. And sometimes we are going to go through a little pity party. But guess what? There's a time when Jesus has come to me many times and he said, Whap, whap. A spiritual. You need to wake up. You need to snap out of it. You know what you need to do. You need to find an altar. You need to pray. You need to pray through. You need to pray through. Tears that saying, God, yeah. I'm giving it to you. Yeah. Tears that yeah. saying, God, yeah. I'm breaking through. Tears that saying, God, I'm going to get victory. Tears that saying, God, I know that there's hope. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the wounds. And I probably would have been there too. And I've been there. But God said he had to give me a Holy Ghost shaking with his spirit. Yes. Shaking yes. the foundations right. of my poor misery of me, oh my, or my, oh me, or however you say it. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 6 says, 
And David was greatly distressed, or David was emotionally upset. For the people spake of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David yes. encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He was distressed. He was upset. My own men want to kill me. Where am I going to run to? Should I get on my horse and, and get out of here? Should I go find a, a place where I can defend myself? Because all of his men there, all of his people, they were greedy for their sons and daughters. Right. But it says that David encouraged himself right. in the Lord his God. Right. I'm sure that every man here was in the same state of mind. They all were going through this, most the same emotions. But instead of getting a hold of God, his men allowed their emotions and circumstances to take over. How far can I go down here, brother? Right here? Okay. They allowed their circumstances and their emotions yes. to take over. Yes. When we allow our emotions, our circumstances, our situations, our sickness, our problems, whatever it may be, to take over, that's when we get into some serious trouble. We start taking our eyes off of Jesus. We stop praying. We stop fasting. Some of us, we stop coming to the house of God. Which I can never understand why you're going through something and you would stop coming to the house of God. I've heard it all. Yes. I've been in the ministry a long time. I've heard it all. Amen. Making excuses. And I've never made an excuse for anybody. I say you need to be in the house of God. You need to be in the house of God. You need to be in the house of God. You don't know what I fall into. You need to be in the house of God. You don't know what I'm going to You need to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. And ministers ourselves, we get we get there sometimes. Sure. I've been there, believe me. Absolutely. But God says, you know where to be. Yeah. House of God. Right. Lord, I'm done preaching. I'm done. I've said it to the Lord a few times. I'm done. I told my wife, I'm done. I'm, I'm throwing it. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I can't. I'm not. And God says, huh. You know what's going to happen if you do? Yeah. And that's basically what he says to me a couple, a few times. And I said, yes, Lord, I'm just looking at my wounds. Yes. <laughs> but they allowed their emotions, their situations, they, they allowed the things that were coming against them. They got their eyes weren't on God. They were on the absence of their wives, the absence of their children. All their goods were gone and they were just... Their eyes were on the circumstances and instead of magnifying their God, they were magnifying the circumstance. Right, right. And whatever it may be, it's on our shoulders sometimes with a magnifying glass and it's sitting there and all we can see is that thing that is so big. Yeah, yeah. Unless we look through the lens of God, then it becomes so small. Right. Because God has everything in control. Right. They got a bad attitude and they started... Pointing the finger mm, and finding right. faults. Yeah. Your fault, David. You took us on where we were going. We should have been here for our families. If we were here, this wouldn't have ever happened. It's your fault, David. 
we're going to kill you. We're going to stone you. See, when we get our eyes off of the Lord and we get our eyes on everything else, our attitudes. You see, the battle is That's true. It's in here. Yeah. The battle of the mind. Yes, absolutely. That's why we ask for the mind of Christ. Amen. We want the mind of Christ. The battle is in here. And their minds were all messed up. They could only see what was before them. They could only see what was before them. And they started pointing fingers at, it, at David. But it says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. Encourage means it means to inspire with courage of hope. He got a hold of God. And he started, amen, to encourage himself. He started to inspire himself. He started to get that courage that he needed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And some of us here today, many of us here today, we need to start encouraging ourselves in the Lord. Amen. Many times I'll remind God in prayer. I'll say, Lord, do you remember when you did this? Do you and he already knows that I'm reminding myself? Do you remember, Lord, when you got me out of this? Do you remember, Lord, when you healed me? Do you remember, God, when you answered this prayer? Do you remember, Lord, when you took me out of this? Do you remember, God, when you filled me with the Holy Ghost? Do you remember that night, God, when you spoke to my heart about pastoring? Do you remember this, Lord, God? And God says, yes, I do, but guess what? You needed a little reminding of yourself. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He strengthened himself in the Lord. In our weakness, he becomes our what? That's right. That's right. Our strength. Oh. Yes. Hope was born. Mm. And I'm not going to get through. I have four pages. <laughs> <laughs> Hope was born. Yeah. In that moment, when he took his eyes off of the situation, took his eyes off of those that wanted to kill him, found a place. And encourage himself in the Lord. Amen. Sometimes we need to find a quiet place. Yes. And I'm not talking yes. about the prayer to be quiet. Right. And I'm talking a place alone with the Lord. Right. Amen. I do that when I, every so often when I know I just need to get a hold of God, I'll stay after church when everybody's gone. I'll stay late up after everybody goes to bed. I'll find some, some, some place, amen, where it's just me and Jesus. And that's what he did. It's me is saying, God, everybody, everything's gone. My, my children, my wife's gone. My men's, their families are gone. They want to kill me, Lord. There's no other place to go but you, Jesus. Right. And some of us right now, we're facing a situation this close, right in our face and mind. And the only where to go is to Jesus. You've tried everything else but Jesus. You've tried everyone else, everything else. Except for the one that you know you should have gone to in the beginning. Right, right. It's Jesus. And I'm going to give you a little advice. Instead of waiting until you get to a place where you're going through something that's, that is hard. That, that, that is just painful or that whatever it may be. Instead of waiting then to pray through and get a hold of God. Why don't you pray through and get a hold of God while you're on the mountaintop. So when the valley comes, you're strong enough. To start battling and start fighting. Sometimes many of us, we wait until we're in the valley. Before we start praying and seeking after the face of God. We need to seek after the face of God no matter if we're on the mountaintop. Whether we're in the valley or someplace in between. Because we never know what's going to happen. Second Corinthians 12, 9 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Psalms 121, 1 through 2 says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which yeah. Lord which made heaven and earth. And I'm going through some of these fast. Psalms 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He is a present help at all times. He is there. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is there at all times, no matter what you're facing or going through. That to chapter 30, verse 7 through 8 says, And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought hither the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Went through his looking wounds, 
sought after the Lord, and now we're saying, God, what do you want me to do? Amen. You see, we don't know what God's will is until we start praying and ask him, God, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Oh. Imagine if every one of them would have found a place in the Lord and prayed and encouraged themselves in the Lord. Right. But David, being a man after God's own heart, wasn't a perfect man. After he licked his wounds and realized, oh my goodness, what's going on? I need to seek after God and prayed and encouraged himself in the Lord. Then he came to a point and said, God, what must I do? What do you want me to do? Right. And guess what? God answered him. He says, go, pursue them. You're going to surely overtake them. And without fail, you're going to recover all. Right. Everything that was taken from you, you're going to get back. Right. You're not going to lose one wife, one child, Amen. any clothing, any morsel, of anything. Without fail, recover all. And God wants to say that to us today. When everyone is gone or forsaken you, it is only going to be you and God. He did not just act upon his emotions like others, but he sought after the will and face of God. He went boldly to the throne of grace. And I'm not trying to get ahead of myself here. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto what the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Boldly does not mean like this. Holy is not meaning a, a preacher taking your hand and dragging you down to an altar. Holy yeah. means you go yeah. to the altar. Holy yeah. means you take the first step and you run to the altar. Holy said, God, I'm going to come to that altar and I'm not going to stop praying and seeking your face until I get an answer from you. That is not firmly going to the throne of God. So we go to verse 9 through 10. So David went, I'm trying to hurry, and the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook of Sor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook of Sor. Faint means, in this instance, it means lacking in courage, in spirit, to act cowardly, dejected, or be depressed. They were so faint. They, they were so licking their wounds. They were depressed. They, they, they were upset. They didn't have any courage. They were lacking in spirit. They were acting cowardly. And I could see David say, now you, we, we're not taking you to battle. God is, has assured me that, that we're going to get victory and everything that was taken is going to give it back to us. We're not going to let your faithlessness or, or your doubt and unbelief. You need to go and pray through and, and get a hold of God. We're going to take those that, that have some, some strength and some courage and some rigor. You see, God's church is not supposed to be weak in faith. People think Christians are weak just because we serve God. Right. I'll show you how weak you are. You come into my home and you try to harm my family. Right. Or you come into the house of God and try to harm the saints of God. Yeah. Right. Right. We're not weak. Amen. We're strong. Amen. Right. Because we serve Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And the book of soul means, it means glad news. Imagine that. Glad news. God gave David some good news, some glad news, things to, to, to have some joy about. Amen. Let me tell you what, the joy of the, war, of, the, of the Lord, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Amen. So don't allow anything to take the joy of the Lord from you. Amen. Because guess what? You're just giving it up. Because the joy, the real joy of God does not come back, come, come be about how much money you have, yeah. how big a house you have. How many friends you have? The joy of the Lord is something there that is there all the time. 
in my hard times, I can have the joy of the Lord. Joy of the Lord is what? Is my strength. I will rejoice in the Lord all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. At all times, we should have the joy of the Lord. Verse 11, and bread. And he did eat, and they made him drink, and they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. And he had eaten no bread, nor drunk any water three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou, and whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, serving to the Amalekites. My master left me, because three days are gone, I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of Cherubites, and goes on and on. And David said unto him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me. And he goes on and he says, I will take you where there are if you don't kill me. You don't kill me, I'll, I'll show you. Verse 16 says, And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread, talking about the enemy, and brought upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing, because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. You see, the enemy was rejoicing, and today the enemy is rejoicing in your calamities. When you don't come here and you don't worship God and you don't praise God, you don't get excited about God, you don't pray, you just sit there, guess what? You are giving glory to the enemy and to your situation. But when you can praise God, when you can worship God, when you can get excited about the things of God, in your calamities, in your trials and situations, the enemy just sits there and they go, I, I, I don't understand. I can't see how a brother Sado is up there preaching like that when he's going through some stuff. I can't understand how he's dancing, how he's worshiping, how he's praising God. I just don't understand it. I'd like to get up and say praise God, Jesus is good. Because I would be glorifying my situation. I want to glorify Jesus. Yes. I want to glorify Jesus. The enemy is rejoicing in your situation today. I want to do like that song, you know, that song, Dancing on the Graves of My Enemy. Yes. Come on. Amen. Sometimes we just don't want to do it. But we can dance on something. On something like the ground. The more you dance, it gets flatter and flatter and flatter. Yeah. To a point, if you do it long enough, it starts going in. Right. It gets further away. Some of us, we need to dance on the graves of our enemy. Yes. The reason why it's graves is because we've already got victory. Yes. We've already got victory, right? Yes. Yes. Don't we have victory in Jesus? Yes. Yes. church to reach this world. Amen. Yes. Micah 6.8 says, Rejoice not against me, O my enemies. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, O Lord, shall be my light unto me. Enemies, no, don't rejoice. You know what? So too much credit get we give to the devil. That's right. All the devil and all his imps, they're fallen angels. There's no the devil and God. There's the devil. There's God. Amen. That is created by God. The angel of worship. And we give the enemy too much credit. Look how strong the enemy is. I was praying in there and I and I was binding spirits. And then I was said, Lord, loosen your power, loosen your fire, loosen your strength, loosen your deliverance, because whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. God has given us so much power and so much authority over this world, over the enemy. We should be able to walk into this church rejoicing and dancing and praising and it. Somebody. 
Lord, how many are, are going to come to an altar of repentance today? Lord, how many are going to receive the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance? Lord, how many are going to be baptized in your name? How many backsliders are going to come through? How many saints of God are going to come to the altar of breakthrough? Come to the house of God expecting. I guarantee when the Lord told David to do what, what he wanted him to do, that David went there expecting to get his wives back, his children back, and everything that the enemy took from him. He wasn't expecting anything less. Because sometimes we expect not enough from God. Amen. Psalms 23 5 says, Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, Holy Ghost, and my cup runneth over. In the presence of my enemies, right there in the midst, the table, there's a smorgasbord. I, I, I love those in Las Vegas. They would have those huge, what are those called? Buffets. Room as big as this, with just all kinds of food. Oh, man. Oh. That's when I can eat a lot back then. I love going there. You spend what, 15, 10, 15 dollars, amen, and you can eat all kinds of food. If some hotels there, yeah, part of the, the, the room we used to go there for some weddings and we had church events there and stuff. We lived in California. But right in the midst of our enemies, there's a table, a buffet of faith. Yes. Miracles, yep. signs, yep. wonders, healings, yeah. victories, yeah. deliverances, yep. encouragement, hope, joy, peace, yeah. love, compassion, forgiveness. Right there in the midst of your trial and tribulation, you can obtain all of that and you can go back for seconds and thirds and fourths and fifths and tenths and hundreds yeah. and millions as much as you want from that buffet of the spiritual things of God. You can just go, you can take it. Get in there now. Yeah. Verse 17 through 20. And David smote them from twilight even into the evening of the next day. Smote in the enemy with 400 men. And there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men, which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had to them. David recovered all. And David took all the flocks and the herds which they dragged before those other cattle and said, this is David's spoil. You see, the enemy cannot destroy what God has given you. He can only take it into captivity. That's right. Think about that. The enemy cannot destroy what God has given you. He can take it into captivity. But it's you and I who need to go in if something is in captivity and take it back like David took it. It is there for you to take back today. It's there. David also took spoil. Not only did he take what was taken from him, he got some he got little extra. See, when you go in and you get in the presence of God, God, God just doesn't, I'll tell you what, when I get victory or over, you know, my trial, my tribulation, whatever it is, it's not that I got victory. God gives me a little bit extra. That's right. I press, I press forward through it. God gives me a little bit extra. Yes. A little bit of more Holy Ghost. Absolutely. Some more faith. Yes. More encouragement. More strength. Yeah. Greater anointing on my ministry. Right. Full open doors where there seems to, to have been shut. Amen. God gives us more. If we go after the enemy and take back what he has stolen from us, our spoil will be a greater walk with the Lord and spiritual faith and strength that we never had before. Think about that. Verse 21 says, And David came to the 200 men which were so faint that they could not follow David, whom they had made also to abide at the brook of sore. And they went forth to meet David and to meet the people that were with him. And when David came near to the people, he saluted them. Then answered all the wicked men and men of Belial and those that went with David and said, Because they went not with us, we will not give them aught of the spoil that we have recovered. Say to every man his wife and his children that they may lead them away and depart. Then say, David, you shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord hath given us, who hath preserved us and delivered the company 
that came against us into our land. For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarrieth by the stuff. They shall part alike. And it was so from that day forward that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. See, sometimes we get some bad attitudes. We do. That person has been backslidden for 10 years, and I know every sin that they've done. And they come up to an altar and they pray through. And we, some of us say, I can't believe that person's up to get blessed by God. Yeah. I can't believe they have the audacity to come into this church and go down the altar and pray through. Yeah. Let me tell you what, if God comes back, that person's prayed through and repented, right. guess who's going to go? Yes. Guess who's going to stay? The person on the back pew with that smart attitude. Yeah. See, sometimes we've got to carry one another burden. Yeah. And David knew that those 200 men, just they weren't going to assist in the battle. They were probably going to be a hindrance. So David said, you go back, you, you stay. We'll take those that are ready. And sometimes it may be you that is ready, but sometimes it may be you that is faint in the spirit of God. Psalms 35 says, for his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life. We can may endure it for night, but what? Joy cometh in the morning. Joy if you hold on. Yeah. Don't give up. Yeah. When you've done all, stand. Yeah. When you've done everything. And you've put on the whole armor of God and you've fought the good fight of faith. And you say, God, I've done it all. Stand. Yeah. On the foundation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And He is going to see you through. He will give you victory. He will deliver you. He will heal you. He will bless you. But some of us here tonight, today, we've got to go in and do a little dirty work. We've got to get our spiritual hands dirty. We've got to get ourselves off of the chair and find a place at an altar and start seeking God. God, I want revival in this church. Are you praying? Are you fasting? Are you witnessing? God, I want deliverance. Are you praying? Are you fasting? Are you seeking God for deliverance? Isaiah 40, 25 through 31. I got three verses for three more scripture and I'm done. To whom then would you liken me or shall I be equal? Say if the Holy One, lift up your eyes on high. Set your eyes on Jesus. And behold who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. In other words, our God does not sleep. Our God does not slumber. Our God is mighty. He is strong. He is always there. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint, and the weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Church God wants us to walk up with wings as eagles. The eagle is my favorite animal. They are strong. They have keen eyesight. They soar above everything. And they see everything. And they are powerful animals. Today God wants his people. He wants his church to mount up with wings as eagles. And soar above the problems. The situations. The things that, the, that are going on in this world. And he wants us to have that keen spiritual eyesight. So that we can see. And we can discern. And we can be vigilant. Because our enemy goes around like a roaring lion. Seeing whom he may devour. They shall walk yeah. and not faint. When my wife comes to the piano, 
Isaiah 59, 19 says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in what like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. We are not alone in this fight. Amen. You can't fight this fight in the flesh. But fight it in the power and in the spirit of God. You can't not fight the enemy in your flesh. Your flesh is weak. We fight a spiritual being. So get in the Holy Ghost. Get in the power of God's spirit. And you will obtain victory. Job 42.10. You know the whole story of Job. I'm not going to get into it. It says, when the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Listen to this. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. David cursed himself in the Lord, listened to the voice of God, took everything that the enemy had taken. And took some spoil back with him. That's right. Job had the Lord turn his captivity into a newness of life. He turned the joy back to Job. And not only that, the Lord gave him twice as much as what he had. Hope is not born. Hope is not born by trying to do things on your own, making your own decisions. Hope is not born by walking out the door. Hope is not born by just sitting there and saying, somehow, some way, God, I'll, I'll get through this. But hope, real hope, it is born when you begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. I've had to encourage myself in God a lot. I encourage myself in the Lord on my job. Amen. My job's not easy. I encourage myself in the Lord with, about my children. I encourage myself in the Lord sometimes about my marriage. Amen. I encourage myself in the Lord about my ministry, about my church. But there's got to come to a point in your, in, in, in your walk with God. Are you tired of where you are with God? Amen. Amen. Everyone in here should be. Yeah. Guess what? You can never get too far with God. That's right. Amen. We, we should all want to grow in God. Amen. But I want to. I want. I want to grow in God. Amen. Every Amen. part of my walk. Yes. Amen. I look around this world. I look around people. I look around even the, even the young people. And the, the disrespect, the things that I see, and it's like, God, you are coming back so soon. I need to encourage myself in you. Amen. So today, this message is for everybody. You may say, brother, I say, I don't even need a mic. You may say, brother, say no. I'm on cloud nine. I'm on the mountaintop. Everything is going so good. It's not a care in my life. But guess what? I've got mountaintop. So I'm faith to faith. But is there somebody here today? Let's all stand. Is there somebody here today that says, God, I need to encourage myself in you? See, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the trials you're facing. I don't know family situation. I, I, I don't know any of that. And I don't want to know unless the Lord shows me. But God knows. I, I don't know what you've allowed the enemy to take into captivity. You know, when we get away from God, that's when things get sit and start taking into captivity. I don't know what, what it is. But some of us today, we need to storm the gates of hell and take back what the enemy has taken from us. I need the excitement of God in my life. I want the anointing of God in my life again. I want joy unspeakable and full of glory. Created me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renewed the right spirit within me. 
Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. You should not be a Christian full of the Holy Ghost with your head down like this. It should be held up high. Show them the love. How many want to be right from this church? How many want to be right from this church? How many have backslidden children? Backslidden loved ones? We've got to go in. And we've got to storm the gates of hell. We've got to storm and tear down the walls of the enemy. And go in and take back what the enemy has taken captive. But are you willing to do it? There is a a price to pay. It's not no lady down to sweet prayers. It's no more I'm going to fast an hour. There's some, there's some intercessors in this church. I know who you are. And God's calling you to intercede like never before. That's where change is done. When you get into that realm of prayer. Now, I may, when I do the altar call, you, some of you may come up. Some of you may not. I am not forcing you. If you cannot come up physically, I understand that. But if God is tugging at your heart just that much, and you don't respond, now listen to me, you don't respond, you're not rejecting me. You're not rejecting me. You're rejecting me. God. I believe God is speaking to a lot of people here right now. I could, I believe this this could be a breakthrough for you, for your ministry, for your home, for your marriage, for your family, for this church, whatever it may be. But be like David. Get to an altar. Pound it if you have to. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Cry out to God. Seek the face of God. Don't stop seeking. Continue to pray. God, I'm not leaving. God, I'm saying. God, my children are lost. God, I want revival. And keep seeking. Get a hold of the horns of the altar. And don't let go. Or come down and say, lay me down to sleep forever. Feel a little bit tingle of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost goosebumps. And go your way. Come down. I've seen it. And give it to God. Get up. And pick it right back. Or take it. And leave it. I'm opening up this altar to anybody. That earnestly wants to seek after God. And you want to change in your situation and you're saying God this is where real hope is born I open up this altar right now to anybody that wants to come up and pray and seek after the face of God